So the next time, the next time that I got into heaven, not, 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 not the next time, let me say another time that I got into heaven. Um, so when you get into heaven, you know what's going on. I know that's going to sound a little strange, but the Bible says that we are seated in heavenly places with Jesus. So I knew what was happening when I got there. And I knew that everybody was faced, say, that way. So I came in at the back and there was lines of people for as far as you could see. And everybody was jumping up and everybody was cheering. And I looked up and I saw these twirling, beautiful confetti things. They were like diamonds, twirling, zipping around. And they were at different levels and they were coming down slowly, catching light, sending rainbows. And these things would come down and they would hit people. They were like drops of water. And some hit me and some hit the people uh, around me. But they didn't make you wet. They kind of absorbed in and you could feel the love of God. So this confetti that was spinning and twirling at this event, this parade, was very life-giving. And I was so excited. You know, I'm watching it and I'm like, wow, wow, you know. And I saw that on the earth once in the natural. I didn't know what it was that I was looking at. And so this time when I'm in heaven, I'm like, I saw that. I saw that in the earth. I know what that is now because it didn't make sense when I saw it. Mike and I saw it. So I'm so excited about it and I'm, I'm, I'm excited and I'm, you make a noise in heaven. You don't have to talk in heaven, but when you're happy there, you, 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 you make a sound. Each of us were created with a sound. And when you get happy, you make this sound. Ah! And it just keeps going and it's happy. It's a happy sound. Everybody makes it and everybody was making these sounds. But somebody noticed me and they're like, Lori, you haven't seen it. Come on, come on. And they know I haven't seen it. So they're helping me. Do you know in heaven, we're related to everybody. Everybody knows you. Everybody loves you. It's like the best family reunion you have ever, ever, ever been to. Really, you guys. I mean, we don't have that yet in church. We need that in church so that we can take it out of church. But in heaven, you have arrived. Jesus, he loves each of us. And so they're like, Lori hasn't seen it. So this crowd starts parting. And then they're like, come on, come on. Now. Most of them can fly like standing up. Like you lift your feet up off the ground. So jump up. Just figure if you could jump up in the air and now you're stuck in the air and you just fly like this. So your body's standing up. You're flying like this. So you don't fly like this. You fly like this. And they're all flying and I can't keep up. And so suddenly the rocks realize that I need help. And so they move me. So the rocks will stand up for you. And so the rocks are going very, very fast. So I'm, I'm really moving quick. The people have moved and the rocks are moving and I'm getting to the front of this parade. There's a parade going on. And I knew the date of the parade. Whatever was going on was because of a date on the earth. And it was a day before I was born. So figure the day of the parade was sometime in 1960. So figure the parade was sometime in 1960. Let's say January 1st, 1960. And there are people marching in the parade. Now, they were all in the same color clothes, but all the people had different styles of clothes. Now, I say the same color because they were dressed in light. How the clothes there work is if you could take every single color and compress each color, and heaven has colors that we don't have. So those colors also work in the mix. And you take every single color and you put it into a circle or into a ball and somehow that creates a sparkle of light, like a sequin. And the clothes are made out of these balls of light connected together somehow. And so everybody, everybody here is wearing different clothes. And so you get to wear clothes of different time periods and the clothes are of light and the people are of different degrees of light. So how much you love Jesus on the earth 
changes your clothes in heaven. You, you shine like different starlights. So I'm looking at these beautiful people and they all know me and they all love me and I want to get to know you. It's great that you know me. Tell me, you know, tell me who you were. But it's like, no, no, no. It's about the parade. And the people in the parade were of different ages and different sexes, different nationalities. And they're being honored for the day, that day, what they did for Jesus on that day. So on that day, sometime January 1st, 1960, I don't know what the date was, but sometime on that, these people were marching in the parade because someone had changed a tire in the love of God on that day while they lived on the earth. Somebody had made a dinner for a family because they needed help. Some child had obeyed their parents and helped them on that day. And these people were now, they were being honored in the parade for what they had done. Jesus had not forgotten what they had done and he was honoring them as they were walking. Now these little drops of love water would come down and And if it hit the ground, it would send out little shimmers and it would race over to the person next to it and it would be absorbed into that person. And so there was so much, so much love water, whatever diamonds coming down on these beautiful people. They were being plastered by this stuff. It was just like God was so in love with what they had done for him on that day. Now there was a man next to me and I think this is the only time that I've been to heaven that I felt regret, but he had it. And I, I was like, wow, that's different here. He had like a regret. And it stands out because it's, there's not a lot of it there. So as the people keep moving, I'm cheering. Everybody's cheering for them of what they had done for that, the love of God on that day. And as I looked down, I saw the Lord's horse. Now, I also have a horse in heaven, but we'll talk about his. His horse was created for him. There's no jealousy between the horses. You know, nobody gets upset that God has his own horse and nobody else wants his horse. It's his. This horse is massive. He is so big. He's like, wow. And he has got this strong head with this strong neck. And as he was walking, he's white and his hair is white. And he's got little, these little drops of love. Water are breaking into him. And, and this horse is so strong and he has wings. This horse has wings. And he marched in the parade. Bam, bam, bam. He was happy. The horse is happy. And you can... Talk to the horse. I mean, we don't talk with words. You can, my spirit can talk to that spirit. And the horse is amazingly strong and beautiful and wonderful. And I just, I kept watching him like, wow. Now there was, there was a rider on the horse, but I didn't look at the rider. I started looking at the cape. So I wore this special so I could show you this. So if this were a cape, you see how this hem, this, this, this part, Imagine it goes all the way down. This hem of this garment was wrapped in leaves. L-E-A-F, a leaf from a tree. And they were still alive. Now, I don't know how the leaves stayed alive, not part of the tree. There's no death in heaven. That leaf is never going to die. But it was special because it had been created to grab a hold of the hem of the garment. And, and it went all over the garment, all the way down, all the way around. And I'm watching these leaves that are alive. And when the leaf, the power of the leaf touched the ground, it sent like many earthquakes. Shh, I don't know how to explain it. And everything shook and moved because of the, because of the leaf. Do you know that leaf was stopping every sickness, every disease, every, it didn't make sense to me. How can a leaf be for healing? And yet the Bible says, but there are his garment, this garment was. And so as the horse walked by, then what I noticed was if the man next to me 
the, the man next to me got in behind the parade behind, because he had lived that day. And all the regret was gone. He didn't march in the front of the parade because on that day he hadn't done anything for Jesus. He hadn't loved the Lord. He hadn't obeyed the Lord. There was nothing that the Lord could honor his life for uh, at the front of the parade. But because he was alive on that day, the Lord was honoring his life of that day. And all the regret disappeared from the man and he jumped in behind. And there were lots of people who had lived that day on the earth who had not been in the front, who were now walking in the back. And we were all cheering them because the Lord had given them breath on that day. And he counted his breath as something worthy to God. The breath that was in them on that day. And I was so excited. You know, I'm in heaven. These are all of my friends. These are my family. I have a family like you guys wouldn't believe. My family tree. Well, you know, you're a part of it. So it just goes on and on and on. And they, the, the friends that had not lived that day, they had not been born yet to, to live in that day, or they had went to heaven before that day looked at me and they said, you didn't see him. You didn't see him. And I knew they were talking about Jesus. And so they're like, move. She didn't see. So the people start stepping back and the rocks are now moving me sideways while I have friends who are doing their flying thing alongside of me so that I can get, they want to get me in front of the horse again so that I can look upon Jesus. And it was exciting and it was fun. And I had this belly laugh happening inside of me. You know, it was so exciting to be there. Everyone was for me. Everyone wanted to help me. And I looked up at the rider on the horse. And what I saw, I was like, what? <laughs> ah! And this noise, ah, it was just such a happy noise, but it was an overwhelming noise and it dropped me and I went bam on those rocks and I was, I was laid out making this noise of joy. What I saw was I saw the king's crown wow. and I've often wondered what will my crown look like? I want to give him something that's of value, right? So what will my crown look like? Will it have, you know, I know that, I know that it gets gems and jewels because of obedience. If you obey Jesus, you get your, your crown looks, it, it's got special markings on it because of obedience. And I wanted a crown like that to give him. But I, I often wondered, well, what would his crown look like? What would the king, what kind of crown does the king wear? And so when I saw it, I was, it was that same, when I met Jesus, it was that same, <sighs> the excitement that went in me. And it just kept mounting, looking at the most beautiful man in the most beautiful crown. It was a crown made out of glass or diamonds. And it was a crown made out of thorns. He wears a crown of thorns. There is no shame in that crown. There never was. There never will be. There's only one king who ever has the right to wear a crown of thorns. And it's our king. And I saw it. It was so thick. I think it must be an exact replication of what he wore, except it doesn't pierce him now. And the light and the glory, I realized all those little love things that are coming down, they shoot up and they come back down, are coming from the crown of thorns. And when I saw it, when I saw how much he loves us, I just, I couldn't look anymore. It's like, how could you not look? I just couldn't. I was, I was on overload. I was like, God, you love us so much. You love us so much. The, the marks on his hands, there's no shame about that. That's glory. That's love. That's what love looks like is the marks that are here. 
and the crown of thorns, you know, it's not, it's not something that he's ashamed of. It's something he's very proud of. It's something that all of heaven is very proud of. And when I saw it, I was just undone. And I fell down in heaven and the rocks were like, they were moving under me. But I was, I was, I don't want to go one more. I don't want to, I need to just stop. And I need to let all of this truth just penetrate me and change me. I need to accept every part of this king whose love is identified in the price that he paid to purchase men for God. And I've been purchased with a drop of his holy blood for that kingdom. My life isn't my own anymore. He's given me callings and, and jobs. and He dresses us. Now, I feel like I'm supposed to tell this. But the Lord has given me different times that I've been to heaven. He's given me different things. And they're each so important. I'm not the only person in the room here tonight who's been to heaven. I know others here who've been to heaven, so I'm not special. But the truth of heaven is special. And he put a ring on my finger. Um, we say this is a marriage finger. But for the Lord, it's the pointer finger. And he put this ring on my finger that's from him. And I can seal any wax with this signet ring that he gave me. The Lord gave me a tiara. Walk around on the earth being a princess. One of his princesses. He gave me a beautiful cloak. He gave me a stunning dress. That dress that I danced with him in, I wear that dress. He has given me shoes of peace like you would not believe. Cinderella's got nothing on my shoes. <laughs> he gave me a horse. And on the day that I walked in the stables at heaven, it's not like stables here, they don't lock up the horses. The stables are, they can come in from any direction and go out whenever they want. They don't get locked up. And I'm a warrior. I get a horse. And when I went in there, my horse came walking up to me. And her name is Freedom. I want to tell you something. I was lost. I was pregnant with our first daughter. We walked into a store back when uh, it was black velvet. So it uh, kind of date me a little bit. But there was a black velvet picture of a horse. I've never been a horse girl. But there was this black velvet picture of a white horse up high on a ceiling. And I was like, I have to have it. And because I was pregnant, my dad said, give her that horse. He said, I didn't know that you like horses. And I told him, I know that. I know that horse. I know that horse. I keep that picture of that horse in my life. That horse is still in my house. But on the day that I went to heaven, when all the horses were around, my horse came walking up to me. It's freedom. And I can, I'm a warrior. I need to ride that horse. And then he gave me a banner. My banner, the words on my banner, one side says forgiveness. He gave me a sword with stones that were in it. I have a green stone, I have a blue stone, and I have a red stone, and each of them means something, and maybe the stones that he gives will give to you will be very different. The Lord is good to his people all the time. And he is storing up for you treasures in heaven. Things like these a room full of presents. God loves us and he is doing good things to bring us with him. He wants us with him where he is. He said he's going to go prepare a place for us. And then he's coming back for us. And if you are a Christian tonight, you're never going to die. You're going to take one breath here and you're going to take one breath there. And let, trust me, when you take that breath there, you're never going to want to come back and take this breath here. 
Unfortunately, if you're not a Christian, you'll take a breath here and you won't get to go there. That place, hear me now, that place is for Jesus and the ones who love him and who will obey him. Now, he, has a, he wants it for each of us. He's not leaving anybody out. Everyone can come to the home that he's prepared. It's true he's created each of us in this room, but not each of us, not, not, not everyone is a child of God. That's additional. You have to want that. You have to choose that. And the thing that separates us from heaven is sin, and everyone has sinned. The Bible says all of us. So it's not the good people go to heaven and the bad people go to hell. It's that the people who love Jesus and are trying to obey him, those people get to go to heaven. And he wants all of us there. And I'm going to live in the parade. There's going to be a lot of days that I don't get to march in the front of the parade. Because there was a lot of my life I did not serve God. But I'm going to make sure each and every day now that I get the opportunity to be in that parade. I want to love and serve God. I want to say to anybody who's in this room and you've never had, you've never heard the gospel like that. You didn't know that there's a heaven where God is waiting for you. And it's a real place. It's wonderful. Over the course of the four times that we've told stories, it's fantastic. But if you've never made Jesus Christ your personal savior, you can't go there. I'm, I'm, I'm not lying. Jesus has to be your personal savior for you to go to heaven. And everybody in this room who already is a, a child of God, they know this. If you're in this room and you don't know if you've ever given your life to Jesus, you can come and give your life to Jesus right now and you will be going to heaven. Right now. If there's anyone in this room, we want to help you. It's not about a movie. It's not about recording anymore. It's about you and Jesus and you being in heaven forever. I know there's a lot of people here. I don't know. If you've turned your back on God, you're filled with pain and suffering. He wants you back. We can help. I, wanna, I want to say that this area, I want to pray with you. If there's anybody in this room and you're like, I want to know that I'm going to go to heaven. I want to give my life to Jesus. Everybody else in the room would be cheering for you if you did this. Right, room? Yes. Everybody else will be cheering for you because we've all had to take that first step. You don't get to take step 20 until you take step one. Step one is declaring that Jesus is your Lord. And you want to be with him where he is. Is there anybody here and you want that? Look at the person sitting next to you and ask them. Do you need help? Do you need Lori's help? Ask the person next to you. Do you need Lori's help? And if that person says yes, tell them you'll walk up here with them. Now I want to say this because the Lord is very patient. He's very kind. Today is not your last day to make this choice. Now, there will be. There will be a reckoning day. And on that day, the day that you die, you take one breath here and then you take one breath somewhere else. On that day, if you don't have what you need, you can't go to heaven. But there's days between now and then. And the grace of God is on us to help us. Now, I want to talk to us, the rest of us, about going and finding the lost people. We need to tell them about heaven. Yeah. We need to tell people about heaven. When Mike was lost, I was the only person in my family saved. When Mike was lost, I told him every day about heaven. He got tired of hearing about heaven. Didn't matter. Told him about heaven again. Tell him about heaven again. Mike, you need to know about heaven. My father's reputation, the Lord had us start it because his reputation is perfect. With heaven and with hell. God's reputation is absolutely 
spotless with both. Go tell the people about heaven and hell. And invite them and keep inviting them to come. And I want to commission you. We know, oh, heaven's going to be so good. It's going to be so great when we get there. What would it be like if your father and mother don't make it? What would heaven be like if your brothers and sisters aren't there? What about your spouse or your children, your friends, your grandchildren, your cousins, aunts, uncles? What about your coworkers? We don't know them yet. We don't know all those people in heaven yet. But there's a time when we'll know for a short time who's not there. We have a time right now. It's easy. Go tell your family and friends and neighbors and coworkers how much you love Jesus. Talk to them about heaven. Tell them that when they take their last breath here, they're going to go somewhere eternally. And me and God, we want you in heaven with us. Amen? Amen. I just want to thank you. Let me pray. Oh, God, you're awesome. We all want to go to heaven. We all want to go to heaven. Jesus, you're so addictive. You're so beautiful. Everything that you have there is fantastic, and we want to be with you where you are. God, we love you. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. And God, You put a calling on each and every person in this room. You made us warriors. You've given people in this room rings and shoes and clothes and cloaks. You've given us tiaras, pens. Some of the people in this room, God has given you a pen. He's given some people in this room a bow, an instrument bow. He's made us worshipers. And these callings are for the ones around us here while we can still reach them. Bless us, God, to use our callings. Jesus, I know there's going to be a parade about December 21st, 2017. We all want to be in the front of the parade, honoring you, loving you. It being displayed, our small act of kindness that you are magnifying. Jesus, we want to use our gifts for you. Oh, we love you. We want to store up our treasures in heaven, amen? We want to see the place where there is no dark, there's no night, and you, you provide all of the light forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. I want to be there, God, where the sound that's in us, that joyous noise, just comes shooting out of us, where drops of love water diamonds hit us and change us to be more like you. Heaven is so wonderful. Oh, it's wonderful. And if the people only knew, if they only knew what you did, how you covered us, there's no shame. Help us, God. We love you. Keep us on that narrow path. Help us go through the narrow gate. Help us listen to the voice of the Savior. At the same time, God, save our family. I just want to take a minute to pray for our families. If you need a, if you need a family member saved, if there's someone in your family that's lost, just I'm the first one standing. If there's somebody in your family, please stand up and we'll just agree together. God, you see us. We love you. 
We're going to heaven and we want to take our family with you. We want them to be with you where you are. We want them to know you. What is it going to take, Jesus? Use me. We come asking God for our family. Send them visions. Send them dreams. Send them an angel. Let salvation spring up from the ground. Send a teacher. Send a preacher. Send a prophet, God. Send an evangelist. Send an apostle. Send somebody. Keep them, God. Just keep them. Extend the life that they have. And do whatever it takes. We trust you, Jesus. Help us, God, understand that some of the gifts that you have are things you have to take away. Help us be that messenger that can come and take away pain. God, we're standing for our families to be with you. Oh, heaven's going to be so great and we want them there. We ask for our friends that are, that are closer than family. And our neighbors and our coworkers, we're asking for them all. We want them all to be with you where you are. God, keep us. You're wonderful. You're powerful. You're beautiful. God, I pray for my friends in this room. You're not a respecter of persons. Take us all to heaven. Take us all. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.